Hello, in this video we're going to look at the economics of the minimum wage. So we're going to start here with the labor market for teenagers. Uh, the labor demand is given by LD, quantity of labor demanded, equals 160 minus 10W. W is the hourly wage rate. And labor supply, the quantity of labor supplied, equals 10 times the hourly wage rate. We're going to start with the competitive labor market and then look at the effects of the minimum wage on the competitive labor market outcome. So in the competitive labor market, we set the quantity demanded of labor equal to the quantity supplied. So setting both of these equations on top equal to one another. I'll collect the wage term, so adding 10W to both sides, we get 20W equals 160, and that will simplify down to an hourly equilibrium wage of $8 an hour. To see how many people will be employed at $8 an hour, take this $8 and plug it into either the labor demand or labor supply equation. So I do that over here. So the number of workers hired, the equilibrium level of employment will be 80. So once again, just evaluating either labor demand or labor supply at the equilibrium wage. These numbers better equal, or you did something wrong mathematically over here on the left. So we neither have a shortage nor surplus in equilibrium. Uh, the labor market clears. So let's put in a minimum wage. Let's assume a minimum wage of $10 an hour. Notice that this $10 is above the competitive wage, so this will have an effect on the market. So uh, the, the math here is not too bad. We're just going to evaluate the demand and supply equation for labor at $10. So I will take this $10 and I'll plug it into the labor demand equation that we used on the first screen. So firms will hire 60 workers. Okay, so the labor demand by firms or employers will be 60, um, which happens to be a reduction in, in employment uh, without the minimum wage. We saw that the equilibrium level of employment was 80, so firms will cut back on their hiring. And next, let's look at the supply issues here. Uh, teenagers willing to work at $10 an hour, plugging this $10 into the labor supply equation, we see that 100 teenagers are willing to work at $10 an hour. So we have an imbalance between the number of teenagers firms will hire and the number of teenagers wanting to get a job at this $10 an hour minimum wage. And that imbalance will be a surplus of labor or just the number of teenagers unemployed. So 100 minus 60 is 40, the level of unemployment. Now let's look at these things graphically. So graphically, I have the labor demand equation sketched here and the labor supply equation. <clears throat> What we found in the first step was where the labor demand and labor supply equation intersected. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was at an equilibrium wage of $8 and an equilibrium level of employment of 80 The next thing we did uh, was we instituted a minimum wage. Here again, this minimum wage is above the competitive equilibrium, and that will create a surplus of labor. So we took this $10, we plugged it into the labor demand equation, and we found that firms would hire 60 workers. Then we took this $10 an hour and plugged it into the labor supply equation, and we saw that 100 teenagers were willing to work at $10 an hour, but only 60 would be hired. So this horizontal distance between labor demand and labor supply at the minimum wage represents 40 Okay, that is uh, 40 workers or 40 people, and that is the number of unemployed teenagers. So 100 minus 60 is 40 unemployed or surplus of labor. Uh, the next thing I did was, um, if you're interested here, we can look at some of the, the efficiency effects or welfare effects of the minimum wage um, by looking at uh, concepts of employer surplus, worker surplus, and then adding the two to get total surplus. So in the competitive outcome, employer surplus is the difference between the height of the labor demand equation and the wage, $8, up to the last worker hired. So this area is a triangle right here, and the dimensions of that triangle um, 
we've got a height of eight units and a uh, a base of 80 units and to get the area we got to use one half okay one half base times height so we have employer surplus of three hundred and twenty dollars worker surplus is going to be the difference between the equilibrium wage and the uh, labor supply equation all the way up to the last worker hired so the difference between eight dollars and the labor supply curve here and that gives us an area also equal to three hundred twenty dollars adding both of these areas up we get total surplus in the market of 640 uh, now going to the minimum wage Okay, our relevant values here are going to be a wage of $10 and number of workers hired of 60. So to get employer surplus, we have this triangle up here. The dimensions of that triangle are given by the following. And so we get a area of $180. Worker surplus is going to be this area between ten dollars and the labor supply curve up to sixty and the only trick here is that really we're going to calculate this area we're going to break it up into two parts we're going to break it up in a rectangular part which I'm outlining here with my mouse so this rectangle has a, a width of four and a length of sixty so that's this part up here and then we're going to add to it the triangle beneath that rectangle which has a height of 6 and a base of 60, so 1 half base times height. Adding all that up, we get $420, so total surplus is now 600 and we see that the minimum wage creates an, an inefficiency in the market. Total surplus falls by $40, and that would be the deadweight loss. We could, we could directly calculate the deadweight loss as this area of this triangle right here. Okay, and the area of this triangle is $40. And basically, we can think what's going on here intuitively. The marginal value of work exceeds the marginal cost of workers' time. So the marginal value of work, uh, the marginal revenue product, is given by the height of the demand curve. And then sort of the, the marginal cost of the workers' time uh, for workers supplying their labor, their reservation wage is given by the height of the supply curve. So that difference is the, the deadweight loss, okay? These workers provide more value than, the, 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 than cost, but because of the minimum wage, these workers are no longer being hired. All right, um, I'll stop here then uh, for today. I hope you found this beneficial.